I got all the hottest equipment. I got the masters. I got this the style on the tools, you know what I mean? I got the fast feeds, man. I got I got the T outliners. I got two T outliners. And these are the modified ones, y'all. These are the modifieds. I got these the detachable joints. See, look, these come off. You can pop them on. I got the, I got the extra blades. Small ones. I'll be I'm sharp. I'm sharp, y'all. I'm I'm telling you, I'm I'm sharp. Oh. Oh, you sharp. Yeah, I'm, I'm sharp. I'm sharp. Yeah, I am. This is the cut. What's up everybody, this is Trey Cuts and this is The Cut, y'all already know it. I had a little name change and the reason why it's not called The Cut when you search me anymore, if you've been searching me, is because it was hard to find The Cut because there's so many different things and so many different other people on YouTube named The Cut. So for now, if you're looking for me on YouTube or you want to recommend me to somebody, just search Trey Cuts and I should come right up at the top. But I still call this The Cut because everybody like, this is Trey Cuts and this is The Cut. Everybody like when I say that, so I gotta keep doing it. Well, we're gonna be talking about how equipment doesn't make the barber. It doesn't make you a good barber. It doesn't make you the sharpest barber because you have all the good equipment. I have tons of equipment. I have a bunch of th different things. I have clippers, trimmers, and all of that stuff that you saw before, detachables, everything. And none of that stuff makes me a good barber. A good barber is educated and they're skilled at what they do and they know how to give their clients what they're looking for. So if your client comes in and he's desiring to look and y'all have a consultation, a good barber understands what the client is trying to articulate to them. And sometimes the clients come in and they don't they don't know how to explain the haircut. I want them. Um, I want it short on the side, but longer at the top. But I don't want it, I want my sideburns to be pushed up a little bit and, and take some off of my beard. So as a barber, you gotta be under, you gotta be able to understand those kind of things. Now don't get me wrong, equipment is a vital part in being a professional. As a professional, you should have professional equipment that's going that is going to be able to handle the workload. You have, if anybody has Anders Masters, they know that these suckers get hot because they all metal. It's all metal housing. So you want to make sure that you have clippers that can stand the workload. My masters will get hot and they'll still work, they'll still cut, and they'll still perform. And that's the thing about professional equipment. You gotta have that stuff if you consider yourself a professional. Don't get caught up in all the latest and greatest equipment, making sure that you keep up with having the new Babyliss that's coming out, making sure you have the new Andis coming out, you gotta have the latest and greatest stuff. It's really not that serious. If my, tr if my clippers are working fine, if my trimmers are working fine and they're giving me good haircuts and my clients are happy with the results that they're getting from the work that I do, I'm not gonna buy any new equipment. The only time I really buy new equipment is if something breaks. And honestly, if one of my clipper blades break or chip, I'll just buy a new one. I won't buy a whole new uh, piece of equipment, a whole new machine. I, I don't feel like it's necessary to keep buying all these new equipment. I had these and this XL since I started eight years ago. I haven't let these go. I had these since I started cutting hair. So I'm, I'm not a big fan in buying new stuff. If I, these are still cut fine. I still put the detachables on. I never had any problem with this clipper, so I won't buy a new one. Now there is a such thing, and there isn't a such thing as having too much equipment. But if you're in a barbershop and you got a drawer full of stuff and it's just piling up and it's just overflowing with stuff, just clippers here, trimmers there, you gotta untangle cords every couple minutes, you just pulling stuff out left and right, you can't find the blades that you're looking for because you got a, a drawer full or a case full of clippers, then you have too much stuff at that particular spot. You should have some on backup. Now you should have some, some trimmers in the tuck somewhere just in case something go down. You should have some clippers somewhere in the tuck just in case something go down. You don't need to have all your clippers in your starting line. I hope I've put out some good information to y'all. I hope this video was nice and short. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like my videos, give me a thumbs down. And if you don't like my videos, make sure you tell me why. I'm always open for suggestions for new videos. I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys later. Peace.